So read there's I read verse. This is verses thirteen through fifteen. Then I read sixteen, sixteen as it this is a chapter called the Divine and Maniac Natures of Krishna. Speaks the first three verses in this chapter describing the qualities of those who are godly. Thank you. Remind of the chapter is dedicated to those who are of the opposite nature, demons. And there's some really, uh, you know, what we say, clear verses describing their qualities or their activities. And these three verses are how a maniac thinks. Uh, the maniac person thinks, so much wealth do I have today, they're always accumulating wealth. And I will gain more according to my schemes. So much is mine now, and then in the future will increase more and more. He is my enemy, and I have killed him, and my other enemies will also be killed. I am the Lord of everything. I am the joyer and perfect, and powerful, and happy. 
I'm the richest man surrounded by aristocratic relatives. There is no so powerful and happy as I. I shall perform sacrifices, I shall do some charity, and thus I shall rejoice. Krishna ends by saying, in this way, such persons delude by ignorance. He goes on to say, thus perplexed by various anxieties, and bound by the network of illusions, they become so strongly attached to sense enjoyment and fall down to hell. Purple. The demonic person knows no limit to his desire to acquire money. That is unlimited. He thinks only of how much assessment he has just now, and schemes to engage that stock of wealth further and further. For that reason, he does not hesitate to act in any simple way, and so deals in the black market for illegal gratification. He is ambered by the possessions here as he has, such as land, family, house, and bank balance, and he is always planning to improve them. He leaves his own train and does not know that whatever he has gained is due to his past good deeds. Given an opportunity to accumulate such things, he has no conception of past causes. He simply thinks that all his mess of wealth is due to his own endeavor. A demoniac person believes the strength of his personal worth and not in the law of karma. According to law of karma, a man takes his birth in a high family, or becomes rich, very well educated, or very beautiful, because of good work in the past. The demoniac thinks these things are accidental due to the strength of one's personal ability. They do not sense any arrangement behind all the varieties of people, beauty, and education. And one who comes to competition with such demonic men is his enemy. There are many demonic people, and each is enemy to the others. This enemy becomes more and more deep between persons than between families than between society and the last between nations. There is therefore there is constant strife, war, and enmity all over the world. Each demonic person thinks that he can live to sacrifice in all others. Generally, the demonic person thinks of himself as the supreme god. The demonic preacher tells his followers, Why are you seeking God? They elsewhere. You are all yourselves, God. Whatever you like, you can do. Don't believe God. Throw away God. God is dead. These are the demonic preachers. Although the demonic person sees others equally rich, influential, or even more so, he thinks that no one is richer than he, and that no one is more influential than he. As far as promotion to the higher planetary system is concerned, he does not believe in performing yayas or sacrifices. Demons think they will manufacture their own process of yoga and prepare some machine by which they were able to reach any higher planet. The best example of such a demonic man was Ravana. He offered a program to the people by which he would prepare a staircase so that anyone could reach the heavenly penance without performing sacrifices. Such is prescri prescribed in Vedas. Some of the present age Dutch demonic men are striving to reach the higher planetary systems and mechanical arrangements. These are all examples of bewilderment. The result is that without their knowledge, they are going down to hell. Here, the words Sanskrit, word Mohanjala is very significant. Mandala means net, like fish caught in a net. They have no way to come out. The Mount Vishu Padaya, Krishna, Prasaya, Buddha, Shivakti, Vedanta, Swami, Namne, Namaste, Sarasati, Deve, Gaudama, Pachirine, Risha, Sunya, Vadi, Pasatya, Satare, Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Bunidhanan, Sri Adhiti Kadhar, Sri Vasudhi, Gaur, Bhaktivin, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, the majority of the world's population, we may even say the universe population is. There are class men who are saintly, godly, worship the Lord, who see the Lord as the object of their service, and uh, depend on the Lord for whatever they do, and make the Lord go in life. They are called pious or, or saintly. There's another class are called demoniac. They think everything is simply an arrangement by material nature. They think it all comes about by some interaction, some gases, and some uh, explosions, and then all of a sudden you have this creation. They speculate about how creation comes, and they're always having different theories that change from year after year. Um, they see the material world as their place. They refer to the world as my world. And they try to exploit as much resources from nature as possible in order to gratify their senses and the senses of those who are related to them. Um, they are always restless, and they're always in competition with others who have the same nature. They also try to amass as much, as much wealth as they can and as much power as they can by getting them wealth. They know that wealth is power and then they use that wealth to get positions in the world in order to further exploit and control nature. These are the these are the characteristics of the present situation in the world. 
We are somewhat surrounded by such persons who are in different places of the world. Some are prominent, some you never hear of, but they're always active to somehow or other exploit others and exploit the resources of nature. Srila Prabhupada would say there's a constant war between these two persons, between the Sauras and the Asuras. Uh, he would say that this is a phenomenon of the material energy. This war never ends. It goes on millennium after millennium, creation after creation. Two types of people, those who are either against God or don't believe in God, and those who live for God and want God to be worshipped by all. Sura Asura. And so they, both of these classes, are generally in the minority in terms of population. The majority of the population is in between. They have qualities of both. Sometimes they have both in the same body. Sometimes they have minor qualities and saintly qualities in the same body. Some are sometimes more saintly, others more demoniac like that. So as time goes on, depending on what kind of association and education they receive, they either move towards the demonic or towards the saintly. And the majority of the population now, due to the evolution of the present society, either is moving either more towards one of the other smaller groups. So we see now, with a careful study, you see the saintly persons are increasing in number, the demonic persons are increasing in number. And the people who are in the middle, they're becoming smaller and smaller in that group. So the polarization in the world is becoming even more stronger. Um, and of course, those in the higher planetary system know that in the higher planetary system there's always wars between the demons and the devotees for supremacy of material energy. In this particular world, demons control five areas of, of control the media, they control the uh, entertainment industry, they control the political situation, they control the educational systems, and they also control, in some aspects, religious organizations. You know, certain religious organizations propagate not about worship of God, but uh, good works for Geneva, and if you do that, you'll become materially what we say. Uh, uh, materially uh, wealthy, situated nicely, get a lot of material benefits from worshiping God. So that's the influence of the demons in all societies like that. Uh, they control the news industry. What you see on the news is just what they want you to see. It's not really what's really happening outside. And so they're very what's influential in the whole program of control. And they're trying to amass more and more control. Um, Krishna is, uh, well, there is Brahma, which is Vishnu and Shiva. Brahma is the creator. Vishnu is the maintainer. And Shiva is the destroyer. So the demon, they want all three of those positions. On this level, they can't be the creator. That's impossible. But they try to be the maintainer and the destroyer. They want to maintain the rest of the population by their demonic programs. And anybody who works against them, they get, people, they get programs to eliminate them in one way or the other. And therefore, they they really work hard to maintain and control everything. Um, they control the, their whole program. They have a lot of money. They have a lot of, uh, what we say, ways to get more money. But that's second. The most important aspect in life is this idea of control. Control is a sense of power. When you can control things, you can control organizations, you can control businesses, you can control people, you can control governments. So their whole program is more and more and more control, control, control. And we understand Krishna as the Bhagavad Gita. He is the ultimate controller. So they make some programs, but ultimately their plans for control are always thwarted by calamities. And so after some time, when this control thing becomes very strong, wars break out and demons fight demons and then there's the demons on the planet. Prabhupada said the next major war will be between demons and demons. And he said that will clean the earth of a lot of these sinful people. And then what will happen? Well, the devotees will take charge in many areas of the world and people will become more and more inclined to spiritual life. So before you can actually, you know, set up a nice house, you have to clean up the dirt first. So there's ways of eliminating the dirt. Uh, this uh, coronavirus is one way to eliminate. <laughs> of course, I'm not saying that this is actually, but Krishna ultimately has a plan to purify the world. Those who exploit material nature are are also exploited by material nature. Material nature cannot be exploited beyond a certain point. After a certain point, material nature reacts, and that reaction causes the, everyone to suffer. Different forms like diseases, calamity, pestilence, earthquakes, hurricanes, droughts, wars, various types of natural disasters, and man-made disasters. 
He's all due to be on the population. Help us. We have as a society. My is not our enemy. My is our friend. Actually, but because there are demons, my has to serve the demons. <laughs> so therefore, because there are demons, there are so much difficulties in the world. <laughs> what a demon you hear here. Self-complacent, impotent, deluded by wilds, false urgencies, always proud. Uh, they don't follow any rules and regulations. They think that they, by their own arrangements and intelligence, they open up institutions for education. Their education basically is how to control material energy and how to become more and more situated in different places around the world and so they can exploit more and more. Um, they're, um, was Robert was saying that, yeah, they'll do anything to satisfy their senses. Probably when he was speaking at, he said, they will do anything, they will do anything. To kill their own relatives, friends, anyone, just to satisfy their own selfish interests. They have no, they have no, what we say, uh, what we say, what's the word? Uh, remorse about killing anyone or anyone or, or, or arranging for mass killings. In fact, they do that. Uh, this whole idea of, of overpopulation is a demoniac principle. So they say we need to have wars every once in a while to reduce the population so the rest of the population can live nicely on the earth because if there's too many people, there's a shortage of resources, and therefore there's scarcity, and then people will have to suffer. Therefore, wars are necessary in order to reduce the population, therefore they open up for resources. Prophet speaks strongly against that. He said, God is unlimited. Resources in this world are unlimited. People are pious and religious and work according to the laws of God and perform sacrifices regularly. There's, there's a profuse amount of material uh, benefits that come by way of nature. Fruits, grains, vegetables, milk, bonnets, jewels, uh, clean water. Everything is there by the arrangement of the Lord when people are, are religious. Prior to the to the rule of King Pritu, there was one king called King Vena. King Vena was a demoniac king, and uh, even growing up, he was so cruel, he would play with his friends and kill his friends. That was he would play. And when he grew up, he eventually took the office of, of king because he was the next heir to the throne. Um, he, saw, he stopped all sacrifices by the Brahmins, and the Brahmins tried to do anything they could. Uh, the only good thing about his rule that there was no crime in his kingdom because he would kill everybody, he the criminals. <laughs> so Brahmas became very angry with him and threatened him in different ways if he didn't change, they were going to do something. He didn't listen to Brahman, so the Brahmins performed a sacrifice, and in that sacrifice they killed him. And then they took his body, and of course they turned his body, and then the scribe said, from that one great saintly person called Prithu Maharaj came. Prithu Maharaj was a saintly king, he was a Shakta Vishavatar, he came to rule the world on behalf of the Lord and reestablish a saintly rule. When he came, he saw that the earth was not bringing forth abundance of, of natural resources. So he was wondering why is the earth withholding everything. So he, he actually went after Mother Bhumi and threatened her unless she gives the resources to the citizens, he was going to chastise her. This is how powerful it was. She responded, because there were so many demonic persons, have been withholding my wealth, and therefore, this is the situation. But since when King Ritu came, he performed these sacrifices again because of the sacrifices. The Lord was pleased that the Mother Earth started again producing all the necessities of life that people needed, needed to live happily and healthy, and even beyond that. So then there was saintly rule for many thousands of years by King Ritu. It's all described in the Srimad Bhagavatam. So that's the idea. I mean, Prabhupada, one time when he was beginning her movement, Papa said we should run for political office. And so he established a party called In God We Trust. <laughs> that was back in America. And one devotee, I can't remember his name now, but he ran for president of the United States. Um, and he's still living in America somewhere. I can't remember his name. But there's a whole campaign. And what was good about it is that as he was running for president of the United States, he was able to speak about Christian consciousness. Of course, you know, at one point, it became so difficult working in the political arena that Prabhupada said, stop this, and we, this really is not our business. We should just be preaching Krishna consciousness, leave the politics alone. So Prabhupada stopped the whole thing at one point. Initially, he was thinking if we somehow or other put saintly people in rule, then eventually we can change the face of the world. And this will happen eventually. Uh, saintly people will take over the, over the world in due course of time as, as spiritual life starts to increase around the planet. This coronavirus will actually increase spirituality significantly all over the world. And when I'm, I'm talking, talking to other devotees, 
And this is true everywhere that many people are now seeing the need to, to practice spirituality, becoming more and more inclined in that area. And it's working very nicely in some areas where more and more people are chanting Hare Krishna, reading Bhagavad Gita, and looking towards spiritual, uh, towards God for, you know, a way of life and solution to problems. So there's a lot of good people in the world. The majority of people are good, but misled by the demons. We're only a handful. As Prabhupada said in one lecture, not it was not a, a recorded lecture, but it was an off-the-cuff talk. He said, there are seven Rakshasras that rule the world. There are many oh. Rakshasras. So they come from other planets, you know, and they take birth on this planet due to this sinful nature of, of certain areas of the world, and then they grow. And then they become somewhat powerful. So, and this, you can see some of their characteristics here. They listen to no one. They also like to give in charity. They're very charitably disposed because they think that by giving in charity, they'd be seen as very nice persons, and people will, will respect them and worship them for giving in charity. And they also know that if you give in charity, you also get back something from that. So that's the only good thing you do, you give in charity to various organizations. A lot of times the charitable organizations, the organizations they create, according to their own desires, what is charitable organization. So this whole chapter, verse after verse, verse number seven, Prabhupada used to read that. He says, those who are demonic do not know what to be done, what is not to be done, that neither cleanliness, nor proper behavior, nor truth is found in them. So there will always be two classes of men, the godly and the ungodly, and this will go on eternally. As long as there's a material world, there will be these two classes of men. Um, sometimes the demons are in control, and sometimes the godly person are in control. So Bob Prabhupada said there's a constant battle between these two forces, and sometimes that battle actually takes the form of an all-out war. And you see, you know, um, wars, certain wars in the past were fought over religious principles. <clears throat> And Prabhupada said the last real saintly war was the Battle of Kurukshetra. In order to establish the Pandavas, or the actual heirs of the throne and the qualified saintly persons to rule the world, therefore Krishna took an active part to help establish that saintly rule. Krishna taking active part again even today to establish the saintly devotees in positions of influence and power. But he's incarnated now in the form of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Kali uh, Kali Namarup Krishna Avatar Namahite Ayasarvatigadista. In this age, Krishna comes in the form of the holy name. The holy name is his incarnation in sage. Purify the world. So if you want to purify this world, you need to spread this Hare Krishna Mahamantra everywhere to every, anyone. Anyone who chants, their life becomes more and more, what we say, peaceful, happy, and religious. And ultimately, develop spiritual qualities and understand the importance of serving and worshiping God. So the Buddhists have a hard time understanding the demons because they, when they hear about the quality of the demons, the activities of the demons, they think, how is it possible that anybody could be so horrible, right? <laughs> the Buddhists, the devotees even, the devotees don't even kill an ant. In fact, if a devotee accidentally kills an ant, the devotee feels very unhappy and laments, oh my God, I killed this ant. That was spirit soul in that body. And so and he's praying for forgiveness, praying to try not to do that again. That's a devotee. But when the demons... They don't care who they kill. In fact, in, they look forward to killing living entities or the bodies of living entities. So they're so vicious. Um, they eat all abominable things. Their lust, anger, and greed is their, is their ornaments. And they're envious of everybody, including their own self. This is the nature of demons. So, um, yeah, as the world goes on, these two camps, the demons and saintly persons, will both continue to grow and more and more. And finally, the demons will be eliminated by the arrangement of the Supreme Lord. It's just a matter of time. As it says in the Bible, but it's also true, time and truth go hand in hand. So in time, truth will prevail. And um, especially in astrological predictions for this next 10 years, quite amazing. And a lot of spirituality will cross over the planet. And one of the biggest things to make that happen is the Temple of Vedic Planetarium in, in Mayapur. Once that temple is built, you know, we're shooting for the year 2022 Gaur Purnima for the opening of the temple. It's gradually being built. This will be big. As Prabhupada said, we kick on the face of the demonic. I put my boot in their face. This is Prabhupada's boot in the face of the demons. This TOVP. This is a big kick. <laughs> because once this plan, this temple gets built, people from all over the world will come just to see this amazing edifice. 
which is really describing a whole planetary system according to Krishna's arrangement. We will have to be we will have to be prepared for welcoming hundreds and thousands of people. And gradually Krishna consciousness will become the result of this. And it's also predicted by Lord Aitanya, as soon as the temple will be built, Krishna consciousness will spread like like flowing rivers in all directions, coming from the Shamaya or down. There'll be a flood of love of God in the world. So it sounds a little, you know, hard to believe at this point, but Krishna is all powerful. It's up to devotees to remain strict in their practice of Krishna consciousness and see and use every opportunity to preach Krishna consciousness and uh, help bring about that. Now every one of us is Hanuman. We're all like little squirrels. We throw a little dirt to help build a bridge across the ocean to kill demons. But there are some Hanumans out there <laughs> who have who, who, whose devotional service can bring about big, big changes in the world. So whatever we can do, according to our square-like efforts, it is also a part. As, as Robin told, Hanuman and Hanuman was throwing boulders into the ocean to make a bridge cross from uh, India to Lanka. Hanuman was seeing this little squirrel throwing little pieces of dirt. He said, excuse me, squirrel, but you know, I don't want to step on you. This is man's work. Get out of the way. <laughs> when Ram saw that, Ram said, Hanuman, he's doing just as much as you are. You're working to your capacity. He is working to his capacity. This is devotion. So we work to our capacity to become Krishna conscious and then take that up and take that the advancement we make as an opportunity to, to make others Krishna conscious. So we have two, two focuses, to become Krishna conscious and to make others Krishna conscious. If we only focus on our own Krishna consciousness, after a while we won't stop making advancement. Because our movement is geared by Srila Prabhupada's direction. He wants each and every devotee to be an instrument of Lord Chaitanya's message for others in the world to spread Krishna consciousness. So he said our movement is twofold, become Krishna conscious and give it to others. So if you and every devotee develops that determination to do both of these things, then how fast this movement will spread. It's up to the devotees. But Lord Chaitanya has a plan. He will spread this Krishna consciousness movement no matter what. If we don't do it, the next generation will do it. If the next generation does do it, the next generation will do it. Somebody will do it by being Lord Chaitanya will make sure that will happen. And as he said, you know, in every town and village, my name will be chanted. The Lord doesn't say things that won't happen. The Lord knows past, present, and future. He knows it's just a matter of time when the golden age will manifest itself, which will clean the whole world of all this uh, demons. Of course, what happens in this world is not so much to concern of the devotees in the sense that um, our goal is to go back and back to God. But we know Lord Chaitanya's desire is to make everyone Krishna consciousness. So the devotees of the Lord want to fulfill the Lord's desire by helping him spread Krishna consciousness around the world. So our concern is not so much, you know, what happens in the world, but how many how many living entities we can bring to low the speed of Lord and devotional service. It says that if you make one one person Krishna conscious, and that person becomes pure devotee and goes back home back to Godhead, wherever you are, whoever your situation is, you will go back to Godhead also. That's the power of preaching. Now, even if you're not qualified, but if you made someone a devotee and that devotee becomes perfect and goes back to Godhead, that's your ticket also. We saw that in life of Dhruva Maharaj. Dhruva Maharaj was coming, was going back to Godhead. His mother, what was his mother's qualification? She was just an ordinary lady. She was prince, prince one of the uh, queens of King Tanpada, and mother of Dhruva Maharaj. But because she had helped Dhruva when he was a little boy and gave him directions in life, she she pushed to put him in the path of bhakti, and from that he he reached he reached when we say her devotional service. So when he was going back to Godhead, he said. To the uh, messenger who had come to take him back, God, he said, I'm not going as my mother goes. They said, Dhruva, look to your left. He looks to his left. His mother is also being exhorted in another Vikunt plant airplane to go back to the spiritual world. Simply by the power for her son, his mother also went, although she wasn't a pure devotee. But she made a pure devotee by bringing him to the path of pure devotional service. So um, this is a wonderful movement. There's no loss. Even if we die, it doesn't matter because our destiny is always auspicious. Whether we're living or dying, we do the same thing. We chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> You're in this body, you chant Hare Krishna. When you leave this body, we'll continue to chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> so, for devotee, everything is auspicious. It's kind of a both like an exciting time and at the same time, time for great concern. 
as demons begin to try to spread their influence more and more, the devotees are also looking out to spread their influence and reach more and more conditioned souls with this message of Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada's appearance in the world is not an accident. It was ordained by Lord Chaitanya for the Lord Prabhupada to come and bring Krishna consciousness in this particular historical time in the history of mankind in order to spread, in order to fulfill the mission of Lord Chaitanya to spread Krishna consciousness to every town and village. So, yeah, as Prabhupada said, for us, Maya, there's no trouble for Maya. Maya is our friend, but because there are demons, she has to serve the demons. So there are demons who are creating so many problems in the world for so many different types of people. And uh, But that will pass in the course of time as the devotees become more and more fixed in spreading Krishna consciousness around the world. So this is... Uh, so here, you're hearing about the Maya qualities. When you read the first verse in this chapter, you hear about the saintly qualities. Krishna spends the whole chapter mostly on the Maya qualities. Just so if we find ourselves uh, being affected by any of these qualities, we can understand these qualities should be given up because they lead to the degradation of the soul. As Krishna says in verse number 21, There are three gates leading to hell. Lust, anger, and greed. Every sane man should give these up or they lead to the degradation of the soul. So these are the enemies. Lust, anger, greed, pride, delusion, envy, enmity. These are all symptoms of the demoniac nature. Okay, we'll stop there. Any questions? Comments? Mm -hmm. From, from who? Let's take the topic first. You can get that one at the end. We don't want to change the topic right now. Thank you very much for your lecture, Your Holiness. I would ask myself, it was um, by, by a waking up process of a hellish person of a demonic nature, when repentance starts and the material nature satisfaction is reached and they realize that there is nothing more to gain, and by facing them, themselves, um, how much is Ramatma affected by this hellish stage? And Why is never affected by anything? It's transcendental. Paramatma is God. God is just witnessing the activity of the conditioned soul in this world, and he's trying to direct people in the right direction. He's neutral. He's neutral when it comes to material life. He's not affected. But he's concerned that people live a saintly life, a godly life, because he knows that's what's best for them. So his concern is that, just like father's concerned that a child lives according to proper behavior, grows up nicely, becomes very uh, successful, the child of father is always looking for the welfare of the child, so the child of father becomes concerned like that. So the, the super soul is, wants to bring about uh, the living entities more and more back to God. So that's the concern of the Lord. But he's not affected by happiness or distress or any of these things. These are all part of the material energy. How much is uh, suicide for such people when they face themselves and realize that there is unfortunately not really a chance to make it to a normal life and how much is suicide allowed recommended or apologized even in such cases suicide is on the rise it's always been a big statistic in the world people take their own life for the wrong for because they're ignorant of the fact that they are spirit souls suicide is a simple ignorance because um the body doesn't belong to you and even if you destroy your own body <laughs> You are forced to take the body of a ghost in your next situation. You're saying to material entity, I don't want a material body. Still, but you live in your ghostly body, the subtle body, and therefore you roam around the world causing problems to others. It's the ghostly. So those who could suicide, suicide usually become ghosts. I mean, there's different kinds of ghosts. Generally, ghosts are one who gives trouble to others because they have material desires, but they can't fulfill them because they have no instruments to fulfill them. So they try to enter into the bodies of others, and therefore they try to take over. So if our person is weak-minded or engaged in various types of intoxication, and then they usually are ghostly hunted. The weak-minded, the uh, the uh, persons who are addicted to drugs, alcohol, like that, they're always always overwhelmed with ghosts. People who are very unclean, ghosts also come there too. So yeah, so suicide is not a solution. It's just not a solution. But people reach the verge of frustration and don't know what to do. And so they think, 
well, I'm suffering. I want to stop the suffering. Because people don't commit suicide because of physical suffering. Somehow, other physical suffering is that people struggle to overcome that. But when mental suffering becomes so acute, then people look at it suicide as a way out. Because the mind is very powerful. And the mind can cause one to, you know, you know become so depressed and so full of anxiety that it can't function anymore. And all it thinks is about is destroying itself or others. Nowadays, people, they're suicidal. But they're also violent at the same time, so they go around killing other people, and they kill themselves. There was another news report today. Some guy took a blood and killed 16 people in Nova Scotia, Canada, before the before the police killed him. And, you know, so these people are so frustration when it reaches a certain level become either suicidal or just wanton violence. So we're living in a world where people are still. Engaging in materialistic activity is a source of happiness. When they get frustrated with these things, uh, they turn either inward or outward. Sometimes they take to excess amounts of drugs and alcohol in order to bury the problems. That's another form of suicide. Or they do, they just become completely insane. You know, the way people act when they are overly disturbed is, is my fault. But it's not a solution. The solution is to understand that you are you are a spiritual being. If you want happiness, you have to go to the spiritual platform. You can't find it on the material platform. And so a lot of times they set up these uh, hotlines for suicidal people. If you're thinking about suicide, call us. There's many of these, uh, these lines. They have somebody on the other line who is very compassionate and concerned, and they speak to people. And that's the way is that they help them become more and more peaceful, and they try to sympathize with their problems. A lot of times their solution is to uh, now worship God. This is where you'll find your happiness. Yeah, Alcoholics Anonymous, big organization in America for people who are, can't give up alcohol. So they have a 12-step program for those who want to give it up. And one of the programs is that you are powerless to overcome your own addiction. You can't do it. It's one of the early steps. And, but you can get that power to overcome it if you if you worship God, if you pray to God. So the step 12, step program, including uh, depending on God and for strength you need to overcome your addiction. So that's our uh, that's our understanding too. That's very basic. We understand that the real problem is birth, death, disease, and old age. It comes by having a material body. So to have a material body means to suffer. Have a material body means to be away from, you know, Krishna. It means to be in, a, in, a, in an environment which is not natural which is always full of anxieties and struggles. So the idea is for a devotee, the concern is, I don't want any more material bodies. I want to get my spiritual body. Therefore, I want to return back to the spiritual world, where life is eternal, full of knowledge, and full of unlimited joy. That's what the devotee thinks. And he wants to bring others there, too. And sometimes in bringing others to that stage, we have to deal with their, you know, their mental problems in order to get them a little bit more peaceful so we can gradually give them what they really need, which is spiritual life. The frustration is there's no apology for suicide. Well, even it's not recommended. In fact, in, you even find in some countries the law is that if you commit, try to commit suicide and you're unsuccessful, you get punished. Suicide is, is, is actually against the law in many countries around the world. True. I don't know how it is here in this country. I know it in America. It's, it's against the law. You're not allowed to do that. It's some legal thing, but we understand from the spiritual point of view, you're not allowed to do it because his body doesn't belong to you. It's been given to you. And when Satan Goswami was overwhelmed with disease and he was thinking, my body is useless, let me throw my body underneath the uh, Rathyatra heart and end his body. Lord Chaitanya found out about that and he wrote Shanatha Goswami. He says, Sanatan, you're a thief. Your body belongs to me. I have plans for your body. I want to use your body to spread Krishna consciousness, and you want to destroy it. So you're a thief. You want to take another person's property and destroy it. That was Lord Gitanya's words to Sanatan Goswami. He was very strong. And Sanatan woke up after hearing it and changed his ideas. Mm -hmm. So you know, the solution is, Ganhari Krishna. <laughs> 
but really can't harm fish. Don't just think, well, I got 16 rounds, if I can finish 16 rounds, then my day is complete. No, we should think that chanting is the most important part of the day. And in that time, I should, I should put as much tension and devotion in order to access the most, most, most amount of mercy and connect with Krishna through his holy name. Mm-hmm. Because chanting can be done in different moods. If we chant in the right mood, then that chanting will eventually develop into, you know, uh, the body will move forward and find great happiness in chanting more and more. There's a problem with this kind of society. We have a lot of services. Therefore, we spend a lot of time doing services. But lately, within the last 15 to 20 years, there's been a, a move back to more emphasis on chanting. This was started by Ayendra Prabhu when he started the 24-hour kirtan in Vrindavan. It inspired the youth around the world to get involved with kirtan more and more. It started a wave of kirtan throughout. His so Holiness Sajananda Maharaj in the early part of this century picked up on it and started doing uh, <clears throat> japa retreats, going and uh, bringing devotees on retreats for a week and just chanting japa every day, 64 rounds, 32 rounds, like that. And then that turned into kirtan mailas, where for five days, kirtan throughout the whole day. So in the last 20 years, there's been a move towards bringing kirtan back as the most important activity in our society. <clears throat> and it's still spreading in that direction now. Hopefully it will continue. That's the quandary that the devotees have. We have so much service, but we want to spend so much time chanting and, and reading about the book and chanting and preaching. But we have other things to do. We have to maintain our bodies. We have to maintain this temple. We have to maintain <laughs> services and so many things. So we want more and more devotees. So as they say, many hands make a work. The more you have on deck, the lighter the work is for each and every person. Any other comments, questions? That, I mean, anyone coming from the outside, a data? No? One? Hmm. I'll talk to you after. That has nothing to do with the class. Mud to design, I'm waiting for the answer. This was a question related to my earlier class today, right? It could be a number, number of reasons that you have to ask for for, that, for those persons. People break up for many reasons, and they stay broken for many reasons. She's a very nice person, and she can't understand why that's happening. She was always she's thinking in terms of, well, if people break up and their children involved. Why can't they come back for the sake of the children, right? That's part of her question, right? Basically. Yeah, she's a well-wisher of everyone. But she has to think in terms of what is the reality. The reality is people are not so much concerned about, you know, going back to something that didn't work or trying to make it work again. Maybe they tried to make it work before and it didn't work and they gave up on it. They're more concerned about moving forward and seeing what they can do now in their present situation instead of going back to the previous situation. That's just logical. With this coronavirus and people on lockdown, one of the uh, biggest problems that's now come, coming up in the area of crime is domestic violence. So because of the lockdown, domestic violence has increased, at least in America anyway. This is a statistic. You know, people are home now, and so they're fighting more with each other. <laughs> you think they would take time to work out their problems now that they have more time, but now they're just becoming more and more antagonistic towards each other. And for the police officers, domestic violence is the worst of all crimes. I remember many years ago, it was Sunday morning early, and there was a group of us devotees who traveled from the Iskand Temple to another temple. We were going from temple to temple. It was early in the morning. It was a Sunday morning, too. It was a weekend, so there wasn't hardly any traffic on the road. So we were driving, and uh, our car had a flat tire. So... Uh, uh, we were a little stuck. Somehow some police officers were there. They came to give some assistance. And I started talking one of the police officers. 
And I said, you know, it's probably pretty much quiet time for you guys around this time, you know, Sunday morning. You know? <laughs> he said, no, this is the worst time. He sees the weekends. He said, the weekends are domestic violence. It's when people are home together with each other on the weekends when they're not working. And there's more. And we these halls. And we have to come in and settle it. And it's like, if you take the side of one, you become antagonistic for the other. And if you take the side of the other, you become antagonistic towards the other. He said, we have it's the most difficult crime to deal with. <laughs> So yeah, the closer you are to a person, when that relationship falls apart, it becomes explosive. Because so much emotion and attachment in that relationship. And when it's frustrated, that amount of uh, you know, hate and when we say emotion and you know. So as you find domestic violence is one of the biggest crimes in the world, especially in America. It's coming from both sides. Either the husband against the wife, or the wife against the husband. Both are attacking each other. So try to love each other. <laughs> Don't fight if there's any reason to fight. Just, you know, take out the prasadam and have a pizza party or something. <laughs> you know, watch some uh, little Krishna movies or something. <laughs> So the bodies, the bodies have disagreement too, but they don't, they don't get into this, you know, really heavy stuff. Okay. So. Just one more question, Your Holiness. Yeah, when uh, by realizing that ghosts can take over our senses, how can we trap ourselves if we follow their instructions? Look with me there, look with me there, and by that they, they understand where our eyes look. And that they're connected to our nervous system, to our bodies. How can we run away again from these things? What are the things we should look and we should listen accept? Uh, or, or is well, it really the devotion of You prepare that? yourself to be protected from these attacks, that's all. Too much sense gratification will track oats. And of course, our, <clears throat> when we got to the temple in New York, in 59th Street, 55th Street, I think it was, it was a former convent for nuns. And many of the nuns had... Uh, died there. So there was a lot of ghosts in that building, an 11-story building. And so the devotees were living there, and they were always disturbed by ghosts. So much so that actually two devotees jumped off the top of the building because of the influence of ghosts. One devotee, when he was, after he jumped, he realized he made a mistake, and on his way down, he started to say, oh, no. So, yeah, so sometimes there's different kinds of ghosts. There's Brahma Rakshasha ghosts. And that means those who... Uh, were Brahmins in their last life and committed really heavy, heavy sinful activities. They're powerful ghosts. And if they, if they attack you, you have a hard time. If you feel yourself choking at night because and you can't breathe and your whole body's tending up, that means ghosts are attacking you. A lot of times they enter into your dreams. So when they enter into your dreams, that's usually due to either you're having too much sense gratification in your Christian consciousness or you're eating the wrong stuff. You're eating food that is, is, is not... You know, not for shaman, it's polluted, cooked by non devotees like that, <clears throat> or cooked by people who have bad consciousness like that. So, yeah, so we've had, uh, you know, we've had so many episodes in our Christian consciousness where devotees have been attacked by ghosts. But if you want to get protected against ghosts, just read the sixth canto. There's an Orion Kavacha, you can put the Orion Kavacha on, it's, it's an armor against the demons. You have to perform this whole thing according to the, the chapter, six anto, and this is the third chapter. It's called Narayan Kanachi. Teach you how to put this armor on. Now uh, you can protect yourself against evil forces. So we pray to Lord of Shring Dave for protection. You can offer prayers to Lord of Shring Dave every day. He protects. Keep everything clean. When things are dirty, they go some. That's one of the reasons why we're doing this Maha cleanup. Clean areas on a uh, goes on coming generally in areas that are clean. They come where there's illicit sex. They come where there's a lot of dirtiness. They come when there's excessive scent gratification. Like that. Too much. And they come if people are sleeping all day. You know, they'll attack people who just spend their day sleeping. You know. A female ghost will attack a male. A male ghost will attack a female. It happens a lot. These old sons, but don't talk about ghosts because if you talk about them, to come. We're not supposed to talk about them. The more you talk about them, the more you're, you're inviting them into your consciousness. <laughs> I 
don't say anything, just forget about them and just take precautions <clears throat> against them by uh, attending Lord Shri Dave's prayers. Tavaka Kamala Venagam Adbutta Sringam Balitaliranya Kashi Putanu Bringam Keshavarita Narahari Rupam Gayanagadi Sahare Gayanagadi Sahare Jayangadi Sahare The Shigadev will be he, very enthusiastic for the devotees. <laughs> Pray to him for his mercy. The Sridev does three things. For devotee, he destroys material illusion, he protects against material dangers, and he uproots desires for food of activities. And that prayer is, let's see, Prahlad Maharaj's prayers. What is that prayer? Om no bhagavate na sringhaya namasteja tejase avir avir bhava vradhanaka vrajadamsa kamasayam Radhana Radhana Tamo Grasa Grasa Om Swaha Amaya Maya Atmani Bhuyasam Om Shram It's a beautiful prayer from the fifth canto. Prahlad Maharaj uh, chants that prayer. Praying the Lord Shrink Day destroy these demoniac tendencies that I have with your root within my heart. Uproot them by your strong nails and teeth. It's a beautiful prayer. Chant that prayer. That's, that's very powerful. 518.8 is the reference for that prayer. And it's very, very... The Lord Nisringadev is the friend of the devotees. He's like your... He's like your parent. It says, We worship Lord Nisringadev in the mood of Tsayaras. As a protective parent. <laughs> and he likes to protect the devotees. But he also responds to our enthusiasm. So we also offer prayers to Lord And also, Srila Prabhupada is very powerful too. If you pray to Prabhupada, he will also keep away difficult entities that might decide to attack you. <coughs> Remember one, this is not minimized Lord Nishrigade, but just, just to glorify Srila Prabhupada. So there was one lady, she was coming to me, she was being attacked by, by ghosts, and it was a really heavy thing. So I told her, all right, chant, just chant Hare Krishna. And so we should chant Hare Krishna, but they were so coming. So I said, all right, worship Lord Shringadev. And she was doing that, and they were still coming. <laughs> so I said, all right, worship Prabhupada. So she started worshiping Prabhupada. It goes for God. <laughs> and Prabhupada said, he said, he said, there's no obstacle I can not kick out. If you come to me, I will kick out any obstacle in your spiritual life. Just come and offer your respects and pray to Prabhupada. And Prabhupada will. Prabhupada is very powerful. So, yeah, keep your mind on Krishna and not on anything else. Okay, should we stop here? Thank you very much for joining us. This was really helpful. Thank you. See you later. Bye. Bye.